Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our exploration in another Chinese expression today. So yesterday we talked about the uh, 事业 and the 学业, which is the two major parts in life that you have to first complete your learning. We call it a 学业, almost like a, it, it in itself, it's something, right? And then I did that. I explained what yet means. It doesn't mean specialty anymore. It means a long dedication, a devoting of your time into something that's specialized. In this case, it's about learning. So that's academics, Chinese way to say academics. And the shi yes, Chinese way to say career. Um, that after after graduation, that's where you dedicate your life to. So it's it's building and doing some serious business kind of thing. So today we have a shi yi xi. Uh, it will be easy because we have both shi and yi uh, carried over from yesterday. Just to give you a recap, shi came from this three finger hand symbol holding a government official type of authority assigned um, brush, supposedly it's a, a brush. So it's a communicating something, passing down the decrees or um, executing the orders from top above, above which is uh, the, the emperors at the time, right? So that's the only you know government work uh, or shape back then. So this government processing of things with a, with a hand of doing something about it, um, this becomes the shi, the event we use. Or I guess we can also translate it as case because if it's a government processed case, they are going to be a, a separate case, right? Uh, it's almost like a project, except there is this government, governmency involved. Um, the governmency came from this oval shape plus this uh, upturned curve that's the head with a fancy headgear. And in the past, specialized headgear. And it's just like in contemporary as well, right? You have a special uniform or a sort of head or some something on, on your apparel to signify which party you're in, not party, but which army you're in. Um, that's what I'm thinking about, like a special headgear, probably part of that to complete the look uh, or to give you the authority, like without showing your, your paper um, evidence of you definitely work in this position, um, this outfit can show you. And outfit back then, besides they have elaborate gowns, that's, I guess, specialized in that, but the, the headgear in a certain shape or in a certain color or used in a certain material, all that can signify the positioning of that government official in in the whole, you know, letters, uh, ranks of of the of the garmency. So garment authority, and then the three finger thing means doing things, processing things. So these are considered shi. That's kind of serious business because it involves garment, right? It could be life changing for some people, right? Okay, and yeah came from this music holder frame, wood frame that's up to the uh, bow shape, uh, up, upward curve, downward curve. So this is this and this, and then connected with a vertical line. And that's the wood symbol. And through the wood symbol, there is a second layer over here. And to me, that looks like a holder of something. Uh, and the horizontal line could be the beam. So here, imagine, I don't know if in the contemporary orchestra, there is such a gong uh, holding frame. So basically it's a wood frame, have to raise above the ground, have to stand on the side, right? And then there's this horizontal beam thing, right? And then the metal pieces, the gongs in different sizes are going to be hung on there. And this, Simplify Chinese, only keep the top portion of it. So omit the, the material or the function of it or the, the structure of it. So material is wood, the function is the holder 
or the frame or something. And the, the structure is also with a horizontal beam. Only keep a small portion of the structure of that, which is the notches on that horizontal beam that you can comfortably secure the, the hanger of the gong, the instrument dangling and below it. So that notch will secure the position. So things are not sliding across the beam so that the gongs are clasped onto each other, right? They have to be perfectly spaced in a certain way that's kind of even, right? So that the musicians when play have a spatial sense of which gong they are supposed to hit now. And that's, I guess it's almost com comparable to the ancient cumbersome way of like a piano piano making right i mean sound music making because piano is a super simplified it's just use the keys and to hit a metal string but over ancient times it's not metal string it's a kind of a gong a metal disc hanging in the air and you have to use the what do you call it the drum to, to hit onto this uh, different pieces and they have to be spaced out enough to the sound to pass uh, and not um, interacting with each other. So that specialized notched beam in a certain way, right? Um, becomes this um, specialization symbol. And the specialization symbol eventually here when paired with processing government serious business things, it becomes like a long dedicated um long long-term endeavor of something because if you become so specialized that means you already optimize you know how things are done and this just shows the result of how it was done um like structured this way um but it gotta came from experience from long many years of training of doing that so yeah eventually become like your endeavor of years of investing your time in doing something so shi ye plus this xie. Okay, xie came from um, the thread symbol. I mean, thread itself is a thread symbol. Um, so this at the bottom is kind of drapey. I mean, I guess I'll just say this. Okay, this sign at the bottom is something drapey, right? So we can we can get a sense of that's something textile related. And then there are these two uh, knots connected everything is connected on that line on that one line i don't exactly know the ancient structure of how the fabrics are hold together uh, or how the like how exactly this detailed image came from but whenever this shape is shown it's related something to fiber or yarn or text uh textile so something related to that line of things. Right side is the sound maker, but the sound maker has the meaning of um, shallow. Uh, okay, so it came from, you see, this one and this one, they are structurally the same thing, except the top one is a little bit smaller, the bottom one is a little bit bigger, but they are the same structure. Can you tell that? And by itself, just one of them, that's uh, good. Uh, that's an ancient weaponry. And my guess is ancient weaponry came from farming tool. That in the usual, like peaceful time, it's farming tool. And in a war time, you can just grab that farming tool and go fight. And it has many pointed edges. So uh, it, it's versatile. Um, but this was definitely in the ancient time to use in a lot of weaponry description, um, including the word me, which is also two of them together stacked next to each other. Instead of a top-down structure, it's left and right structure signifying one warrior holding two of such weaponry in each hand to, to, you know, to go fight. Um, but here, when stacking vertically, it actually has the connotation of it's something shallow. So I'm not sure if it because this particular farm turned weapon tree is something shorter um, in comparison to other type of long longer, um, like a spear kind of thing, or because the 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 storage of the uh, this weapon tree is is 
kind of a shallower, so it's easier to reach. In any case, we don't know the context of why two of them stack up together. That means something shallow. And the shallow thread, shallow this textile image paired together means thread. There got to be some some uh, explanations of why. Um, up to now, I can think of, OK, it's something related to textile, right? And in the formation of textile, it comes from fiber, which is super thin and usable for humans. And to make it useful, we have to convert from this super thing, almost non-existent, tiny fiber to bind them together, to make it into thread. And from thread, thread is like uh, several of fibers combined together, twisted together or something, so that they are bind together. They, they are stronger and thicker, easier to handle to a human scale that we can handle that. And then the threads can be further do, um, form together, like a several thread can further bind it together to form a yarn, which is a, even more thicker and a stronger fiber. And then from yarn, uh, then things can be woven together to form a two-dimensional piece of fabric. And that's can, kind of a ca covering an area, right? And then from that two-dimensional, you have to cut and sew. I don't know, like in ancient times, most likely it's a draping thing and tying together and knotting together with the, with the opening of the, the knots together to form kind of a three-dimensional because eventually the, the goal is to form something covering human body, which is three-dimensional thing. So in that process of gar garment making, the thread is relatively a shallow process. So that means this fabric is not a, a wide area 2D yet. So it could be in the yarn stage, or it could be in the thread stage. And in contemporary Chinese, I know this character, xie, a lot of times we use it as a thread. So thread is it's something that you can use to, to patch up things. You can uh, pull the thread through the needle and uh, start to sew, right? That's the kind of xie uh, we use in our contemporary language. So, OK. Now you see what's going on. <laughs> like we are talking about a career, like a serious business, a specialty, long dedication, kind of a thread. Why there are booby pictures on this here? Okay, let me tell you. Um, okay, originally, Shi Ye Xian means in this palm reading fortune teller practice. Okay, this palm, you see, there are different lines here, and this red line that's emphasized, that's the Shi Ye Xian. This line signifies, if you want to take a look at it, your own palm, you can see if like from your younger age and then further, further up, you can see if your uh, line of career is deep going and strong, going strong. So that's supposed to fortune tell your career wise. And then we have this life uh, longevity or lifespan line and we have wisdom line yeah i have a deep wisdom line okay <laughs> and then uh you have this uh emotional or religion relationship line like how how well your uh, relationship are basically your marriage or your dating life whatever so these are the four major lines that on the palm readers uh, playbook so eventually in contemporary uh, media coverage age, this was transferred from the palm to here, front and center over here. The reason uh, why is because a lot of these, these are, you can tell, they are kind of actors, actresses, or whoever doing this um, posing pictures and that showing off what's in front of their body. <laughs> this is a um, uh, I guess a technique for such attention grabbing. Um, I don't know if they are at a celebrity level or influencer level, at least that they, they try to catch your attention, right? To become more, uh, you know, 
to make more money in their line of work, which is using their image. And um, eventually people find a correlation of how they get more camera time or more exposure, which is by exposing the front part of here and to show off the assets, right? And eventually that practice becomes so common that the media people capture that uh, behavior from um, models or actors, actresses, um, from them. And then they use this 事业线, this reading, as if showing, showing their bosom or part of their bosom has anything to do with how well they're going to do career-wise. Career like if they're going to get more business because they have more audulation in the front, um, it could be that. So eventually this 事业线 nowadays is less commonly used as a palm reading process. I mean, this is a voodoo business anyways. This is more voodoo business used as a media, in the media language to describe, okay, so-and-so, somebody is having a good xian, as if they are, their livelihood depends on how impressive uh, their uh, front body is, okay. So that's um, decolletage, um, Chinese expression, xian. Okay, Kashi Interdependency of Thinking About One Word Today with Sophie, see you another day.